Hey guys, and welcome back to another Tech Arc video. Today, we're going to show you how to install Boot Camp or Windows 10 onto an external drive that is connected to your Mac. Without further ado, let's jump right in. First, you're going to need some prerequisites. You're going to need a USB connected mouse. I'm using the Razer Death Adder Elite, and of course, your external drive. Here, I'm using a Seagate 500 gigs expansion SSD. Then, there's a few things you'll want to download. First, you'll need to download the Windows 10 ISO disk image. Search up Windows 10 ISO on your preferred browser and then click the top result. Then, you want to click your edition of, select your edition of Windows 10 and that will be just, it will just say Windows 10. So just click that and press confirm. Then choose your language. When you press choose one and then uh, scroll down to your language. Press confirm again and wait, it, wait for it to load. After that, press 64 bit download and wait for the, for the ISO file to download. Next, you're going to need to install Win to USB. So just search out Win to USB again on your preferred browser and click download. Another thing you want to download is VMware Fusion. So again, just search for VMware Fusion and click the result that says VMware.com. Then just click download now in the top right of the page. Then click Fusion Pro for Mac OS 10.15 Plus and let that download. The last thing you want to download is Windows support software from the Bootcamp Assistant program. So just open your Spotlight search and search up for Bootcamp Assistant. Now that you've got Bootcamp Assistant open, click Action in the top left of your screen and press Download Windows support software. Choose where you want to download the software and click save. When the support software has finished downloading, press quit. Now that we're done with all those prerequisites, we can move on to the main process. Open disk utility. Before I move on to this part, please note that this will erase everything that is already on your external drive. So if you do have anything important on there, move it out of there because it's going to be erased. So now on disk utility, um, choose your, your external drive and click erase. Then change the format to MS-DOS FAT and change the name to something uh, to something relevant like bootcamp like I've done here. Then click erase. Then it will just run this process and then after that everything will be erased and, it will, and the disk will be reformatted. When that's done, click done to continue. Now go to your downloads and open the VMware Fusion download.
When the VMware Fusion file is opened, double click on the VMware Fusion icon to install it. Let the um, computer verify VMware Fusion before it opens it. Click open on this pop up. Now VMware Fusion will be installed. So just let this download and then after, and then we'll move on to the next step after that. Just agree to the terms and conditions here. And press, uh, and press. Um, I want to try VMware Fusion 12 Professional for 30 days. Again, you just want to type in your administrator password, uh, administrator username and password here. After that, just press done, and then the, um, you'll be greeted with this pop up. Just press OK on this. And now you have VMware Fusion open. Click the plus in the top left and press new. Then cl click install from disk or image. Then use, then click use another disk or disk image. And browse for your ISO file. Just press OK on that and then press open. Then press continue. Now type in all your details. These none of these really matter because this won't be your actual Windows. Press choose your Windows version and press Windows 10 Windows 10 Home. Press continue and then press continue without key. Press more isolated and then press continue and then press finish. However, if you do want to change your settings, then just press customize settings. But for most Macs, the default settings will just be fine. So if you don't need to change those, just press finish. Now you can just press the play symbol on on that Windows uh, VM and then just press OK. Let the VM boot up. Now it will just set up Windows, so let it do that. When the Windows setup is complete, just let your Windows machine boot up.
When your VM has booted up, you want to drag and drop the Win to USB file from your downloads onto the desktop. Let it copy that, and then you will also want to cop uh, drag and drop the Windows support folder onto the desktop and let it copy that as well. When it's fish finished copying that, what you want to do is click the virtual machine, uh, click a virtual machine in the top left of your screen. Go down, go down to USB and Bluetooth, and press connect the name of your external drive. When you want to, when you're done with that, you want to stay in that virtual machine menu. Scroll, go down to CD slash DVD, and press choose disk or disk image. Then. Look for your ISO file again, click on it and press open. When, when that's done, go back to the CD slash DVD menu and press connect CD slash DVD. When that's done, you want to open, you want to double click on the Win to USB icon on your desktop, choose your language and then press OK. Wait for Winter USB to open, then press I accept the agreement, press next, and just keep pressing next from here because everything will just be fine, and then click install and let it install Winter USB. When that's done, press finish. Now you can double click on the Haslio Win to USB icon to open Win to USB. When Win to USB is open, click the CD icon, then click click the drop down arrow next to CD slash DVD and click the top result. Then you want to choose your uh, version of Windows 10, so just choose Windows 10 Home and then press next. When you press next, you want to select the destination disk and that will be the name of your external drive. Here mine says Seagate Expansion SSD. Then here, you want to click GPT for UEFI. Let this load. When that's loaded, you just want to click next here. And let this load. This will take a long time, so I'm just going to speed it up by quite a lot, just to shorten the video down. Now that that's done, you can just press exit. Now you are ready to open Windows. What you gotta do now is restart your computer. You can close the VM, you can shut it down, you can, do it, you can close everything, restart your computer, and when you restart your computer, hold, win, hold Command and R until you see the Apple icon. When you see the Apple icon, you can let go of Command and R and let it load up. When this is done, you might be greeted to an unfamiliar screen. Please note that this step may be different for people who are not using macOS Big Sur. But if you are on Big Sur, what you want to do is click the Apple logo in the top left of the screen and then click Startup Disk. Now that you see your startup disks, you just want to press Win to USB and that shall boot you into Windows. Now you can do your Windows setup. Now this is the bit where your USB connected mouse comes in handy. Since your wireless keyboard and wireless mouse drivers aren't installed yet 
on Windows, what you want to do is use your USB uh, connected mouse to navigate the setup and on bits where it is, uh, it requires you to use a keyboard, click the ease of access icon and then click on screen keyboard. This will put uh, a keyboard onto your screen that you can type with using your USB connected mouse. Now that you're in Windows, you're going to need to get some drivers installed. So what you want to do is navigate to the Windows File Explorer, then go to this PC, go to Win to USB, go to Windows Support, go to Boot Camp, and then double click on Boot Camp, set boot camp Setup and get that set up. After you finish with that, it will suggest that you restart your computer, you should do that and then you're almost there there are just a few more drivers that we need to install now that you've restarted your computer all your drivers should be installed including your network drivers which means you're now um able to connect to your wireless wi-fi network so you should just go ahead and do that when you're connected to your wi-fi network open the start menu and you should see apple software update Open that and you'll automatically check for any updates that you need to download and if there are none um, you can just do that and there are no up Apple software updates that you need to install and you can just continue on to the next step. Now the next step you want to do is go to the Windows search bar and search for device manager. When you're in device manager you want to open sound, video and game controllers and then um, click on Apple audio device or anything that is related to audio right click it and press update driver and then click browse my computer for drivers and click next it will automatically update the drivers and ensure that the sound is working on your computer now if you just go through the drivers and if you see any drivers which have an exclamation mark next to them right click uh, right click there update the drivers and then this is the last step now which and after this you should be ready to go and now finally the last step is to install windows updates this step is super simple just go to settings go to security and updates and press check for updates if there are any updates windows will install them automatically and when they're installed you're ready to go here is just an extra tip because I ran into this error when I um, installed Bootcamp onto my external drive. Um, I was experiencing constant crashes when I tried to boot games or really just like my web browser. Something like that would just crash and that was because of my paging file size. So you can search up how to change your paging file size but if you don't know how much it should be, your initial paging file size should be about 1.5 times the amount of RAM you have and your and your max um, your max uh, paging file size should be around um, four times the amount of physical memory that you have so for example if you have eight gigs of RAM like I do I, I set it to um, 12 gigs as the initial paging file size and I said I didn't set it to four times the amount of RAM that I have, but I set set it very close to that. So I set and I set my max paging file size to 30 gigs. But if you don't know how to change your paging file size, you can just search that up, and there are plenty of tips online. Thank you guys so much for watching today's Tech Hawk video. I know I haven't uploaded in a while, but we will be uploading a bit more now, and um, we will be uploading more frequently. So, but if you enjoy this video, please do leave a like. If you have any issues, um, leave a comment and we will try to respond to them as soon as, as soon as possible. And subscribe, turn on the notifications so you don't miss our next upload and miss our future tips and tricks. Thanks for watching and bye.